Hey guys, it's Casitas again. So as usual, let's start out with doing our heading, name, date, grade, and section. Don't forget to put English class or Mrs. Casitas English class. Today we are going to compare and contrast, which is also our objective to compare and contrast arguments. And our I can statement is I can understand the author's purpose. Now, if you need more time to write this down, remember you can just pause the video and take the time necessary. Now, last week, or the week before, we read, thank you, ma'am. And then after that, we read, a police officer stop changed a teenager's life. Now, since we've read both stories, we're going to look at both sides to understand what exactly the comparison is that we could make between these two stories. Now, we're going to compare the characters and the people from both stories. Comparing texts from different genres, such as an article and a short story, can lead to revelations about how characters and people are similar and different in what motivates them. The author may provide a direct motivation or reason for a character's actions, or the author may imply the character's motivation. With a partner, complete the chart with information about the traits and motivations of the characters and people in the text. Then use your notes to discuss similarities and differences in how Mrs. Jones report, support, sorry, supports Roger and how Corporal Keffer supports Jordan. So here you can see we have a chart to do that. You're looking for each person's motivation and traits, what motivates them to do what they do, what is the reason of why they're doing this, and then you have to actually use textual evidence or cite evidence from the text demonstrating these traits or motivations. Now, once you're done with that, it's time to analyze the text based on this information itself. One, connect. What similarities do you see between the actions of Mrs. Jones in the short story and Corporal Keffer in the article? You're going to compare these two characters from different stories, and you have to find similarities between the two of them. And believe me, there are going to be similarities, even though the stories are different. Two, compare and consider how Roger and Jordan each solve problems. How are they alike, alike and how are they different in solving problems? Again, you're comparing and contrasting. You're going to look for similarities between Roger, not physically, not the fact that they're both young men, nothing like that. You're looking for how they solve their problems. How are they similar in solving their problems? How are they different in solving their problems? You're going to focus on their actions most of all. Three, infer based on what Jordan said at the end of the article, what else might Roger have said at the end of the short story? Remember how Roger went out the door, the lady gave him the money for the blue suede shoes, and as he walked away, he wanted to say something else to her except for thank you, but he couldn't really think of what else to say. So this is the moment now where you guys can think about, based on everything that happened to Jordan in his article and everything that happened to Roger in his story, and really think about what Roger would have really liked to say to Mrs. Luella Bates Washington Jones. Analyze the text. Synthesize. What have you learned from these texts about how people can take positive action to make their own lives and the lives of others better? Really think about that, guys. That, guys that's a really good question. Once you're done with that, it's time to research and share. Now, your group can continue exploring the idea of taking positive action to help others, presented in both text by researching an organization that supports young people in your community, and then writing a news bulletin about it. Now, these are the steps you can use to look for it on the internet. To find reliable sources, begin by searching for specific organizations in your community. You may also learn about these organizations by interviewing people at your school who know or are affiliated with the organization. Well, for the time being, that, that's a little bit impossible for us. One, brainstorm organizations. In your group, share ideas about local organizations that can help young children or students. Some examples might be a public library, parks, recreation department, or teen or community center. Brainstorm and list these organizations, then choose several to research. Two, research the organizations. Decide which group member will research each organization. Since these are community organization, organization sources might include the organization's own website for information about its mission or goals and how it operates. Other sources may include local newspapers. 
You can use a 5WS and H chart to record information about each organization you research. Then use the chart as a framework for synthesizing your information into news bulletin. Now, for those of you that don't remember what a 5WS and H chart is, this is it. These are the WH questions along with the one that only begins with an H. So you would ask yourself, what is the organization's mission or key goals? Who is involved with the organization? Why is the organization supporting young people? When did the organization start its work with young people? Where is the organization located? And how does the organization support young people? Three, share what you learned. Everyone in your group is now an expert on an organization. Listen carefully as group members present their news bulletin. Ask questions to request and clarify information and build on each other's ideas when you discuss how these organizations help young people in your community. To be honest, guys, this is a really interesting way to take a turn. Sorry. To take a turn on thinking about how both of these stories turned out. <clears throat> Sorry, losing my voice there a little bit. All right, well, I can't wait to see the end result of this. I'm really excited. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.